Next, let's talk about looping in Haskell. Let's suppose I wanted to print the numbers one through 100, right? I could sit, sit here and I could say print one, print two, print three, and I could do that the whole way down through print 99, print 100. But that's a lot of typing and that gets old really fast, right? So let's find another way to do this. What if we could loop through one, two, three, four, you know, loop through all those numbers in like five or six lines of code, that would save us a lot of time, right? So we can create our own function called print to 100. And we're gonna feed it a value of one to start. So print to 100, and we're gonna start with the number one because we wanna print the number one first, right? So one is our parameter here. This is our parameter. Uh, print to 100 is gonna be our function call. We need to create that function though. So above main, we can say, we can declare the function print to 100. And we're gonna say it equals, oh, it takes in a number, right? It takes in an integer. So here we go, num, and that equals do. So num is our parameter. And we're using do because we're gonna have multiple instructions under print to 100. And so it takes in a one. And we're gonna say if the number that it takes in, in this case, if one is less than or equal to 100, then we want to print out that number to the console, right? Because we wanna print all the numbers from one to 100. So if num is less than or equal to 100, then print num else, if it's past 100, then we can say, we if we're gonna print a string, we need to put it, put string ln, completed the loop, completed the loop. Um, now, if we try and run this, right? So let's suppose we tried to run it. Print to 100, takes in one, we called it with one. Is one less than or equal to 100? Yes. So we're gonna print one, and then that's it. Uh, there's nothing to loop. We can't go to two. There's no way to go to two. We just printed one and then our function stops. And let's prove that. Let's save it. Clear it if you haven't. Reload and run. And you're going to see it just prints a one. And we don't want to do that. We want to print all the numbers from one to 100. And we also need to add a function type up here. So let's say print to 100. Remember colon colon. And now we're going to type out the function. So parameter is a number in this case, and we know it's an int. It starts with one. And it's going to return, or it's going to end with putting or printing something to the console. So we know that's IO with the parentheses. All right, so that's our function signature. Now, underneath here, we were saying that it only prints one right now, and then it stops. We need a way for it to print every number from one to 100. So just like we used to do up here to do multiple things, we can use do in the then or in the else to do multiple things before we continue. So we could say then do, and then we can say print num, and now we can do multiple things under then instead of just printing num. Now we can do something else, which is exactly what we want. So if we only print one the first time, and now we want to print two, well, we need to run this function again because we need to say, hey, I want to print to 100, and this time I want to use two, and then I want to print that two, and then I want to print three, and I want to print everything up to 100. So I can say print to 100, and this time instead of running it with one, now I could say I'm going to run it with two, but then if I do that, then I'm going to come up here, and we're going to run it with two, Two is less than 100, sure, I'm gonna print two, and then I'm gonna run it with two again, and then I'm gonna get two, 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 two. So my result will be one, and then a bunch of twos forever. And that's not quite what we want either. So what we wanna say is the number we took in was one, right? So number plus one. So we're gonna run this function again with one plus one, and that's two. So save that, and now what happens is, so let's talk it from the beginning. Print to 100 takes in a one, right? Here comes one. If one is less than or equal to 100, which it is, we print one, 
and then we call this function again so we come back up to the top of the function and we run it again with 1 plus 1 which is 2 so now num is 2 this is the new parameter this whole thing is now num num is 2 so in comes 2 is 2 less than or equal to 100 yes so we print 2 and then we run the function again with 2 plus 1 2 plus 1 is 3 and that's our new number so in comes 3 3 less than 100 yes so we print 3 print to 1 and we run the function again with 3 plus 1 and that's our new parameter which is 4 4 becomes num and we do this again and again and again until we get to 100 let's say we're at 100 now is 1 less than or equal to 100 yes 1 is still equal to 100 so then we print 100 and then we run it again with 100 plus 1 so now this num is 101 right so up we go we plug in 101 and we say is 101 less than or equal to 100 no 101 is not less than or equal to 100 so this doesn't run anymore so now we go down to the else and we put to the console we've completed the loop so if we control s save that head over to our console clear it reload and run you're going to see that it does indeed print out one two three four five six seven the whole way down to 100 and after 100 it prints out completed the loop so that's how we write loops in haskell and the fancy word for that is called recursion so the next kind of loop we want to write is a loop that we can use to print out each item in a list so first let's create a list and we're going to call our list students we're going to say that equals remember list has these brackets and let's do a list of student names so alice Anna, Tim, Tom, and Austin. So this is our list of students. There's five of them, Alice, Anna, Tim, Tom, and Austin. Now let's give that students a type, right? So students, colon, colon, and we're going to say it is an, a list, right? So it has the brackets and what is inside of the list each index is a string of type string so it's a list of string and remember this entire list is stored inside of the students variable so now let's write our loop to print each one of these students to the console so similar to the last one we're going to say print students and we're going to feed it a value of zero so we're going to call print students and give it an integer of zero as a parameter. So above here, let's write our print students function. It's gonna look like this, print students, and our parameter zero, we're gonna call that num equals do. And let's write our type signature before we get into writing the loop. So print students, colon, colon. Remember we do our parameter first. Our parameter is uh, some type of number, in this case an integer, so int arrow and then what are we returning from this print students well we're putting something to the console or we're printing something to the console so whenever we return putting or printing something to the console it's io with these parentheses and now we can write our print students loop so if we want to say if num is less than or equal to four four because this starts at zero zero one two three four so if num is less than or equal to four for each of the students, right? Then we want to put string ln, we want to put the student's name to the console. So let's say put string ln student, and this isn't gonna work, but we'll come back to this in just a second. Else, we want to put string ln printed all students. So we want to put each student to the console but we don't just we don't just have a variable student laying around so we need to access each student in this array so what we can say is we can put the student by accessing the correct index of the list sorry list not array so to do that we use the parentheses and we're going to say students bang bang number 
in this case, the number is zero, right? So, because zero comes in and students bang bang zero is Alice. If we remember accessing array things, right? So students bang bang one would be Anna, two would be Tim, three would be Tom, and four would be Austin. So we say print students bang bang num. And in this case, num is zero, it's gonna print Alice. So let's start there. We don't have a loop yet, but we're printing Alice. Control S to save, head over to our console, clear, reload and run, and we get Alice. Now let's make this really clear that students bang bang num is the student, right? So we can cut this out and above this if statement, we're gonna say let student equal students bang bang num. So now we're gonna get the student here. So we're gonna get Alice and store it inside of the student variable. Then down here, then put string ln, we can just say student like we wanted to initially. So we get the student here from the list. If I say array, I apologize, from the list. We store it inside of student, in this case, Alice and when we print it. So let's save it, make sure it still prints Alice, clear, reload, and run, and it still prints Alice. So now, instead of printing just one student, right, we need to loop through all the students. And so to do that, we're gonna use then do again, and we're gonna do multiple things if the number is less than or equal to four. So first we're gonna print the student, and then underneath that, we're going to call this function again so we can print the next student, similar to the previous exercise. So print students. And remember, we could say we want to print, now we want to, instead of printing student at index zero, we want to print student at index one, but then we're going to just, so let's follow the logic we did this, right? So we come in here, we say print student zero, num is zero, Okay, uh, is num is zero less than or equal to four? Yes. So we print the student at index zero, which is Alice. And then we run this function again, and num is now one. Great, so we go through num is one. And if one is less than or equal to four, yes. So we print the student at index one, Anna. Then we run this function again with one. And then we're just gonna keep printing Anna over and over and over again. And that's not quite what we want. So again, we can use print students, but this time parentheses, and we're gonna say num plus one. So now let's run through the logic of this. We do print student zero, num is zero. In we go, we get the student at index zero, which is Alice. Is zero less than or equal to four? Yes. So we print Alice, and then we run this function again with zero plus one as the new num parameter. So this is the new num parameter. So zero plus one is one. So now print students with one. Student equals students, bang, bang, one, which is Anna. If one is less than or equal to four, yes. We're going to put the name of the student, which is Anna. And then we're gonna run this function again with one plus one, because num is now one. One plus one is two. And so two is now this num parameter. So in comes two, same thing with three, four. And then <clears throat> when we get to four, so we go through with four, four is less than or equal to four. So, because four is equal to four, we put the name of the student at index four, which is Austin. And then we print, run this function again with print students. And the parameter is num plus one. So four plus one is five. So now num is five. So five comes in as num. And so we say let student equal students bang bang five. And there is no fifth one. So that's undefined. That's okay. If num, if five is less than or equal to four, five is not less than or equal to four. So this time we skip this and we come down to else. So we say put the string print it all students to the console. So let's save it. Head over to our console, reload and run it, and you'll see that it prints out Alice, Anna, Tim, Tom, and Austin. And when it's done printing out each student in the list, it then says print it all students, right? So that was our goal. Uh, we looped through a list